on my mind And I guess it goes like that That is a tune. Well, we're back again. You might be surprised to see me back so quick. I thought I'd keep the ball rolling while I'm doing a bit of fishing. It's nice to have a little bit of spare time. So we are off back to Partridge Lakes again. It's uh, Tuesday morning. I think it's about seven o'clock. I'm about halfway there now. Really looking forward to it. I hope you enjoyed the first little uh, YouTube video back. A live vlog, if you like, at Partridge Lakes again. Hopefully we'll do a bit better this time. You know, it was a bit hard last week. That was literally last Tuesday. Um, and as I'm filming this, that one is going live. So hopefully you've enjoyed it. By the time you're watching this, you will have seen it, hopefully. Tuesday open match. This time we're on legs five and six, but sometimes they change it about. So we'll have to wait and see. It's a bit rainy today. I'm, um, I'm not looking forward to getting wet. But it's warm, you know, I don't really mind going out in the rain when it's, when it's warm enough. During the uh, winter, I hate the rain. Wet hands equals cold hands equals miserable day. But yeah, so Tuesday open, lakes five and six. They're probably my two favorite lakes of partridge. They're absolutely fully fish, full of fish. There are sort of the, the newer lakes, if you like. So I always think they tend to fish a bit better. I know that for me, they're the stronger lakes of partridge. Same, same, same system though, you know, it's mud fishing hopefully. Lake six is always good for some mud, on, some carp on the mud, as well as down the edge and shallow, so it'd be the same, same approach. Last week it was difficult, so I'm just gonna bear that in mind as I'm, when I'm fishing today. I think the night match last night was one with about 130 pound Mike McGrath on peg 107, so it'd be nice to draw that one. I think, aside from him, I think it was quite difficult um, across Lake 5, but it's only a three hour evening match, so I'm not gonna take that. I'm gonna take that with a pinch of salt. I think uh, it's gonna be overcast, damp, but warm. A Little bit of a wind on. So you never know, it could fish pretty well. I'm hoping to draw maybe a nice peg on Lake 6 with a load of carp in, or maybe a nice shallow peg on Lake 5. Get tapping away. <laughs> have the shakes by the, by the end of the day. Do, 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 do. Tapping the water. <laughs> I don't know, I, I do quite enjoy fishing the overshotted rig. It's one of those things, not everyone likes it, but it's a deadly method. And there's a time and a place for it. I think it can be on b-ball on its day, but it's not always gonna be the winning method. It's, um, it's one of those things. You've gotta have it in your armory. So I've got me overshotted rigs, got me little bag of muddy floats, all ready to go. All my rigs on my top kits. Right, looking forward to it. Hopefully, um, you're gonna enjoy it. I'll just try and vlog the day a little bit, not do too much filming, because I just wanna enjoy the fishing again, but just do a little vlog for the day. Let's get us on a flyer. Before I go, make sure you go and check out Cashflow Media Extra. I know I banged on about that last time, but there's loads of good content on there, and now there's a live match. The August live match has just gone live with Christian Jones. He's at Tunnel Barn Farm. The venue where he recently won the Daiwa Pole Fishing Masters. A big competition, you know, it's a three day, a three day competition there. Really difficult one to win. And yeah, he's a master of the F1 game. So if you wanna go and find out sort of how he targets them tricky tunnel barn farm F1s with car, definitely go and check that out. If you become a member today, by the time this is out, you'll be able to access, whether you're an elite or an extra member, you'll be able to access that live. It's a two hour special, I watched it last night. A brilliant match and you know he didn't have, his all, have it all his own way it was a little bit difficult at times just shows you it, it's it's you know, even the top anglers struggle but he figured it out changed a few things and he ended up having a great result in the end so go and check it out brilliant live match so yes on to partridge lakes we'll be there in about an hour let's have a let's have a flyer and i'll catch up with you guys once i get there so you knackered it was an early start this morning let's go and get bacon sandwich and a peg, hopefully a flyer. Let's go and see what we're on.
Robert Swan. One, one, three. I've done the draw, doesn't sound like I've drew any good again. My drawing arm has just completely disappeared. <laughs> I hope, um, I hope it's better than I think. I've drew peg one, one, three, wrong end of the lake, I think. Peg 107, 105 is where all the fish are. So it doesn't sound like I've drew a very good peg, which isn't great. Long way to drive for that, but we'll we'll give it a good go. I think um, hopefully still get a few bites. We'll soon see anyways. We'll get some gear out, have a wander up, see what the peg's saying. You never know. Off to the peg. Need to try and stay positive. Match fishing is a cruel game at times. You can't always be sat on a flyer. I mean, look, it's not a great peg on paper, but the wind is coming like this end of the lake, like straight in my face. Not exactly gonna have a ripple, I don't think. Um, the fish are just all down that bottom end. The wind is blowing smack into 107. So this is the peg, spin you around. This is 113, I think. Peg here. Just double check for put gear on the wrong peg. This is weird. Yeah, that's 114. This is 113. Look, see what I mean? The wind is coming like this way, but it usually hacks down that bottom end. But it's weird, I can see like a few carps sitting on the top. I don't know if they're F1s or what, but there's quite a lot of fish just sat under the surface. There's, a carp, there's quite a few fish here to be fair. Like, and here as well, I don't know. It's kind of balled up on the top. Hopefully it just means it's solid here. <laughs> See them all sat there. If this wind keeps blowing like that, straight into my face, it might be better than I think. Hopefully, apparently Mike Senior had 50 pound I figure last night on the night match. We'll have to see. I think I'll be in with that side. So I think I'll be with I mean, a few pegs on that side. See the carp here? There's obviously a few fish here. Hopefully it's better than I expect. A nice mud line to be fair. So I'm probably gonna fish ground bait and micros on the mud with some maggots on the hook. And then ground bait and, and the same in the edge and then throw maggots down the middle and fish on the bottom and shallow. <laughs> Hopefully if these fish are swimming around, there's some fish here and they might go down for a little feed. The wind is coming sort of this end of the lake. As long as it doesn't change and just hammer down that end, we'll be okay. You never know, that's match fishing. Gonna go and get the rest of my gear out. Hopefully them fish get their heads down and have a right chew. Fingers crossed we get a few bites. 113 has not been kind to me in the past. So hopefully today is the day when 113 comes good. Fingers crossed. It's easy. Ooh. Well, I'm all set up. Literally got a minute to go. All my top kits are ready. Danny's down there, gonna blow the hoop lake, see him walking away. Got all my bait ready. Oh, maggots for the hook and shallow. And if you had a shallow line there, I'm gonna fish in about two foot, just off the edge in that corner. And I'm gonna feed ground bit of micros, maybe just micros, we'll see how it goes. They're nice and dry, so they'll sink nice and fast. Got some corn, some expanders for the hook. Um, and then I'm going to fish the mud line. The mud line is quite nice. On the mud I've got... I think the rig here. On the mud I've got about probably 18 inches, which is nice, because I don't think they're going to want to feed in shallow water today. It's quite clear. Um, I've got a line down, just down there, throwing maggots. It's about sort of three foot there, which should be nice. I'm going to pot some ground bait and throw maggots. Um, just a bulk. A Maggie sal float with a thick bristle. And then that's my edge rig, two foot. And I've got a lot of shallow rigs, so that's the uh, all in. Let's uh, hope we have a good day and I'll catch up with you at some point through the day. Well, we are two hours into the match. Um, no, to be fair, it's been better than I expected. Not been brilliant, but I've had a few bites. I've had, got about 32, 33 pound. I've caught most of it mugging, to be fair. Nothing's fed early doors at all. No one's caught anything, so I've basically just sat with a mugging rig on. It's just been like weird balls of fish swimming around to my left um, and every now and again one would go down and take it, just double maggot on the hook. 
fished under a little dibber. Um, and I've just gone on the mud and had two big F1s on, on micro pellets. Started feeding ground bit, but I missed a couple of liners. So I've swapped to micros and it seemed to be a bit better, but they've gone again now. So I've just swapped to a 50 50 mix. It's a little bit deeper on the mud, but I don't mind that. I feel like when it's difficult like this, you want a bit more depth, anyways. So I have got the option of shallowing up by a few inches if we go to the right hand corner of the mud. But I decided to fish where it's about 18 inches just to give me a chance of catching a few early doors when they don't really want to come in that shallow water. And I'm hoping later on, if they start feeding, I can just chuck my plummet on and re plumb up. I'm feeding shallow, I had one go on it and it's not gone under. The lads around me are catching an odd one shallow, but not really. Not, not enough to make me go on it. So I'm just going to keep feeding that and hope that maybe later on, you know, having a little arrival on that. Give you another update in a little while, but yeah, going alright. Hopefully we can catch a few more, get to sort of 40 pound halfway through, would be nice. But yeah, I'll catch back with you in a little while. Give you a 30 second update, see if I get one. Probably, I've got 66 pound now, I've got an hour left. Now, I caught a few on the mud, and then I've had a few, a few shallow actually on maggots here. I've had a few on a long line dibber when they were a bit light, when they were a bit shy early on. And um, I've caught between 18 inches and, two, and 12 inches. Um, deep on an overshot rig. Fingers crossed it keeps going under. It'd be nice to get to £100. Everyone's catching a few shallow to be fair. It's fishing better than I thought. They were sulking a bit earlier, just milling around, but there's not as many about now, so maybe having a little feed. I've been feeding ground bit down there. Colouring that up a little bit. Same in the mud, but they're just difficult to catch in that mud. I don't know. Just been potting ground bit on it. Hopefully they'll go down and have a little chew. Um, but I'm going to put this down because I want to feed. But I'll maybe catch up with you at the end of the match and hopefully we've had a decent finish. 15 minutes of the match remaining. <laughs> I've now got £95 on the clicker. Really pleased with that. I think I should have about a ton probably. So it'd be nice to have a little few to end on. Just fishing down the edge now. I've literally been feeding it all day but never caught on it. I've been concentrating on shots. It's been, it's been nice and steady. And the F1s have been really big so it's quite just coming up. It just went a bit funny. So I've come down the edge and just had a carp about four and a half pound. Nice little ghosty, so. If this, if this goes under again, I might stick it out down the edge. But I'm just going to reprime up shallow and hopefully get a little late run on that. We'll just have to wait and see. It's one of those things. It's a gamble at this point. You can go in and catch ten pound in a matter of a few minutes on that shallow line when then big get one turn. Um, but then again, you can catch a big carp down this edge. Definitely an odd one there because I can see some plumes of mud coming. So it was a nice four and a half pound carp. A few more of them will do me. Well, that's the end of the match. I've actually had a really good day. I think I um, might have slightly underestimated this area. I think, uh, yeah, that's what I get for moaning. I look like an idiot now. I mean, I've had a, I don't think I'll do any good overall. I expect Lake Six to have done a few of the better weights today, but. I reckon I've probably got, well, I've got £109 on the clicker. Um, so I reckon, I'm hoping they'll go back 120. But I'll lift my nets out and have a look. It's actually been really nice. When I dropped in the edge, that last little spell, I had three carp and then it went dead. So I went back shallow the last sort of five minutes and I had another a carp and, and two F1. So it's been really nice. shallow has been great. The weather's actually held out for us, which has been lovely. Um, I've caught next and often on the mud. I think I've had one on the mud, the rest shallow three in the edge and then I mugged about 25 pound early so it's actually fished really well chuffed to bits with that don't know if I'll do any good overall but we'll see anyways we'll get weighed in and then once I've got all my results and all that I'll talk through rigs and bits and bobs
Report that I've actually managed to win the match over the moon with that. Not gone at game. <laughs> it's starting to feel like I couldn't win anything. But yes, we've managed to win the match. 123 pounds I've weighed in. Um, second of the match is around 80 pounds. So it has fished quite difficult. So I chuffed a bit with that. I've had a brilliant day. Really, really enjoyed that. I wasn't expecting to start with. I wouldn't say this is a noted peg, but that just shows you what did I say at the start? Fishing is a very funny game and you got to go to your peg and not sort of make a decision beforehand, give it a chance. And yeah, it's been, it's been decent. I've really enjoyed it. I've caught mostly shallow, um, loads of big F1s, massive like two, three pound F1s. I mean, I've, I've underclicked by about 15 pounds. So, you know, and I was clicking them at three pound, a lot of them. So I think I've, some of them F1s must have been over three pound. Um, massive fish, lovely to catch. I've caught a lot of fish on an overshotted rig today, 18 inches was around the best depth to start with. I st didn't start catching on it till about three hours to go. I was feeling it from the start and eventually I managed to get a couple. And once you get that sort of, what I like to do is once I get one on the overshot rig, I sort of look at my phone and you can sort of see how long it's taken between bites to get a fish so you can gauge. Cause obviously you're not getting any indications on an overshot rig. So I don't know, something that I like to do is keep an eye on the time and then I can sort of, you know, if I've not had a bite after five, and like four or five minutes, I'll change rigs. Just, it's just, just so you don't get stuck on one rig tapping away and keeps you active because you're not looking for line bites. You kind of just like, well, you just, you just get ripped under when you get one. Um, but 18 inches was good to start. Everything was in the top of it. And then as the day progressed, I started using my 12 inch and 14 inch rigs. And last hour, the 12 inch rigs been really good. Loads of big F1s and a few carp actually as well, which was very nice. Um, I've loose fed probably about five pints of maggots. Partridge Lake's finest white maggots. That was really nice. Not not being too heavy. You know, I, I got I always bring a gallon with me on a match like this. Um, but I've I've gone through about five pints. So you don't need a boatload. I think five pints is probably sufficient because I threw them down the edge as well. Not at a bite down there where I've thrown maggots in three foot. That was a bit of a backup, just in case you know the day was a bit more of a struggle than it was. In the mud line across there, I've potted ground bit continuously all day in case I needed to go on there for a run of carp. Uh, but I didn't really need to use it the last couple of hours, so I just sort of kept potting it in case. Um, and then down the edge to my right, where I've been just in that little hole there against the reeds, there, I've potted ground bit and then sort of 20 minutes to go, I've dropped in and I've had three carp in, in sort of 10 minutes, which is, I mean, it's, I've been, I've won the match by a 40, 50 pound, but you don't, you just don't know. You've got to keep all your lines running. When my shallow line went a bit dead, I thought it was a good opportunity to jump in there. I've been potting it with 100 milligram bait every, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes just to keep a bit of bait there so the carp will be nice and confident when I dropped on it. Um, when them carp are in, your, in, in the area, I could see them this morning, so I knew they were there. So I wasn't afraid of feeding too much bait. I, I think it's always nice here. You can give, a, give it a bit of bait. I use the 100 mil pot from Guru, so I don't go too overboard. Uh, control myself slightly. And I just sort of keep potting some green swimstone marine albert mixed really wet. Um, and I eventually I could see them clouding up, but at that point I was, I knew there was fish there, but I was catching really well shallow, so I couldn't come off them. They were that big and I was getting a fish every sort of two or three minutes, sometimes quicker. Um, and like I said, if, I, if it took a bit longer, I knew to change lines or change rigs. That's why I like to keep a track of time. Um, yeah, when I dropped in down the edge, I caught on, let's see if I can find my rig for you. Uh, this rig here, little muddy style float, similar to the bag of ones from Guru. This is an IW, one of my ones I've had in my box for years. Um, large Guru pole pot, this was the best today. I think when you're fishing for carp, I always think a big, big, large Guru pole pot. You could even use the paste pot if you're feeling ballsy, but I've, this was enough. It's not absolutely solid. I only fished it for 20 minutes, so I didn't really need to use it. Um, didn't need to up the bait really it was enough when i went in there it was pretty quick bite so i didn't really have to change my feeding 
grey hydro in a short kit, that's really nice for carp. You can get them in really quickly, especially when you're bagging late on. Um, nice short line between pole tip and float with a back shot, number eight, just so I can pin my rig right against the bank. Um, got a bulker shot right next to my hook length um, and a four inch hook length of 013 and a 16 Super LWG. So it's all end gauge mainline, 019. I think I always use 019 mainline. It might sound a bit overgunned, but I always feel like you're better off going a bit heavier and then you know it's going to be durable enough. Um, and yeah, short kit, one of the little Aventus F1 kits from the Aventus pole. I've had that pole for a number, probably, I've had it for uh, two years now, I think, just coming on for two years. Um, absolutely unreal bit of kit. Makes my life an absolute dream on the bank. I've got a bunch of F1 short kits. I've got some great cart power kits. I've never broke it. It's absolutely incredibly strong. I've also got a, a 700, but I never use it. I just use it as a spare. I did think I might use it if I was fishing for a big cart, but truthfully, the 900 is strong enough as it is, so I like the stiffness and the strength of it. It makes F1 fishing an absolute dream. Um, shallow rigs, <clears throat> let me talk you through. The best one, well, late on was, where is he? This one. So we've got a little number one dibber, one of the little RW ones. Literally got my float right against my connector. A little speed bead from Guru. They're ones that come on the Dacron connectors. Um, they, um, they're great because they just make it nice and easy. Everyone knows about that connection. Nothing special. White Hydro in a short kit again. And then I've just got a bulk of, I've got five number 10 shots. I don't like to overshot my, my overshotted rigs too much. I like just to have it so it fluttering through. I mean, this isn't my invention. This is things I've been taught by other people, but I like to have a sort of five or six number 10s, depending on the wind. If there's a lot of wind, then I can, you know, up the shots to get the rig to um, stay stiffer. Um, I like to have my shots quite a distance away from my hook as well, just to let that float through. So when you're flicking your rig up and down, as you will have seen from the video, um, it just allows you to your rig to have a bit of movement. Uh, 013, 013 hook length and a 16 Super LWG. They're the two rigs. I've had a fantastic day. Um, hopefully you've enjoyed the little vlog. I've won the match, 100 quid, so that's a little bonus. But unfortunately, I can't believe it, but I forgot to go on the Super Pools. And I never do that, I always go in. And yeah, so I've lost 40 quid, but I've also gained 100 quid and I've won the match. And I don't feel like I'm useless anymore, so that's fantastic. Hopefully you've enjoyed the vlog. A little short one um, from Partridge Lakes. If you liked it, let us know in the comments. Remember to subscribe give it a like and I will see you on the next one.